Now here's the fascinating thing which to me is the final proof that that book is the Word of God, that it must be God inspired. In the last generation only, we've discovered how to make purer light than we had before. Most light is bouncing around, waves crashing into each other, going in all directions so that the light coming from that spotlight still lights this side of my face by reflecting off that, that tinsel up there. Um, we're used to light coming at us from all directions. But we've now discovered how to send light in one direction. Laser light is the most common. You've seen laser light beams straight as a die. But we've also got what we call cross-polarized light. A polarized filter, if you can imagine, allows light through like that. But if you put another polarized filter at right angles to that, you've really got a very fine filter. If you take sunglasses and take one lens and put it at right angles to the other, it goes even darker. It only lets very straight light through. Now, people have taken jewels and precious stones and cut a very thin slice for microscopic purposes and then shone cross-polarized light through them to see what happens. To put it very crudely, what happens to these precious stones in pure light? And one of two entirely different things happens with every jewel. The technical term, to give you a bit of science for a moment, is anisotropic jewels and isotropic jewels. Now what happens is this. Some jewels in pure light whatever their color to begin with, they may be red, blue or green, turn into all the colors of the rainbow and the most fantastic patterns. Other precious stones in pure light lose all their color, just go black, look like a lump of coal dust. And it's only in the last, this generation that people have discovered this unusual property. For example, diamonds in pure light are nothing. Did you get that ladies? They're not even that. Diamonds Nothing. Nothing. They won't be there. <laughs> no. So make the most of them here. <coughs> Rubies. Uh, garnets. Just lose everything. Emeralds. No, they keep it. Oh, good. There are other stones that are anisotropic and go into these beautiful colors. Now here's the fascinating thing. The 12 precious stones that God uses to build the New Jerusalem are all anisotropic. In pure light they are all far more beautiful. And God doesn't touch the diamonds or the rubies. He doesn't build with this. Now, let's just put on the screen a picture of these stones. Yeah. Look at the top 12 stones on this picture, and you'll see the stones of the New Jerusalem. Look at the four bottom ones at the bottom of the picture, and you'll see they're black, no attraction, whatever. Now then, who knew this 2,000 years ago? No scientist knew it. Nobody knew it. John the Apostle writing the, down the book of Revelation as the Lord dictated it to him, he didn't know. Nobody knew except one person in the entire universe, and he knew, and that was God himself. Where is that written exactly? Revelation 21, right. halfway through, and you'll find all the 12 stones listed there. And you can just imagine from the picture we've seen on the screen how beautiful the New Jerusalem is going to be. Mm. No need for do-it-yourself decoration or changing rooms there. No need. The materials that God uses will be fabulous. From verse 19, 21 right. verse 19. Read them out. Uh, the first foundation was Jasper. Yeah. The, uh, the, the second, sapphire, the third, chalcedony, the fourth, emerald, the fifth, son uh, sardonyx, the sixth, uh, carnelian, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysoprase, uh, chrysoprase, chrysoprase, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, uh, the twelfth, amethyst. No diamonds, no rubies, no garnets, because they're and they're isotropic. Mm. Now, isn't that amazing? To me, that one thing alone would prove that the Bible was inspired by God because nobody could have known this. They didn't know it until our generation. But there it is. 